Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the fundamental counting principle and the factorial notation. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to correctly evaluate factorial notations and accurately solve word problems involving the fundamental counting principle. Let's say you are tasked to list all the possible combo meals that you can form using this menu. So you have to choose one for the main dish, one from the side dishes, and one from the drinks. Let's recall that an event is a result of an experiment. So one event would be choosing beef tapa from the main dish. Another event would be choosing buttered corn for the side dish. Another event would be choosing orange juice for a drink. The combinations of all these three events is called the compound event. And one result or one combo meal for this instance, choosing beef tapa and then buttered corn and then cucumber lemonade is what we call an outcome. So how many outcomes are possible? How many combo meals are possible? We can answer this using different techniques. We can use tree diagram, table, or systematic listing. Let's illustrate one of this. Let's try the tree diagram. What are the possible results when a coin is tossed three times? A coin is tossed three times. So when we toss a coin, there could be two possible results. We can either have a head or a tail on our first toss. When we toss the coin for the second time, we can either have, we can either have, of course, it's still either head or tail. So this can be head or tail. And this can also be head or tail. When we toss the same coin for the third time, this one could be head or tail. And this one could either be head or tail. This can be head or tail. And this can be head or tail. So how many possible outcomes can we have? Let's list all the outcomes first. The first possible outcome is getting a head on the first toss, getting another head on the second toss, and another head on the third toss. So head, head, head. Another outcome would be getting a head on the first toss, getting another head on the second toss, and getting a tail on the third toss. Another outcome would be head, tail, head. Head, tail, head. Another outcome is head, tail, tail. Another outcome is tail, head, head. Another outcome would be tail, head, tail. Tail, head, tail. Another outcome is tail, tail, head. And the last outcome would be tail, tail, tail. So how many outcomes do we have? We have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 outcomes. While tree diagram is easy to use when we only have few choices, um, this is not recommended though if we have a lot of choices or many choices. Say for example the one that we have here, the combo meals. We have uh, many choices here. So using a tree diagram would not be sound for this situation. Well, in that case, we use another technique. And that is when we use the fundamental counting principle. What is a fundamental counting principle? It is a mathematical way used to find the number of possible outcomes of an experiment. Example, if we are looking for the number of two-digit numbers, two-digit numbers, using the digits 3, 4, 5, and 6, when repetition of digits is not allowed, we can multiply the total number of digits, which is the total number of choices for the tenth digit, to the total number of digits minus 1, which is the total number of choices for the ones digit. Ha? Huh? Ano yon? <laughs> Okay, so this situation tells us that we are looking for two-digit numbers. So we have here the first digit and the second digit. 
So two digit numbers. We are allowed to use the numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. So these are the numbers that we can use for these two digit numbers. And repetition of digits is not allowed. So ang gagawin natin using the fundamental counting principle, we count the number of choices for the first digit. So we have, we can use either 3, 4, 5, or 6. So we have a total of 4 choices. So we have here 4 choices for the first digit. And then we multiply that. We multiply that to the number of choices that we can have minus 1 because repetition is not allowed. Bakit minus 1, ma'am, kapag yung repetition is not allowed? Well, minus 1, kasi kung ano man yung number na ginamit mo dito sa first, first digit, hindi mo na siya pwedeng ulitin dito sa second digit. Okay? So, using 3, 4, 5, or 6, pag ginamit mo na yung 3 dito sa first digit, hindi mo na siya uulitin dito sa second digit. Kaya magma-minus 1 tayo. So, at first, on the first digit, we have 4 choices. Ngayon, sa second digit, we only have 4 minus 1. So, we can have 3 choices. Okay? So, we multiply that 4 times 3. That is equal to 12. Meaning, there are 12 possible outcomes that we can have for the two-digit numbers. Or, we can also say, there are 12 two-digit numbers that can be formed using 3, 4, 5, and 6 when repetition of digits is not allowed. To understand it better, let's go back to our example with a, uh, with a coin. So, a coin is tossed three times. Okay. On our first toss, how many choices do we have? We can only have head or tail. So, we have two choices. On the second toss, how many choices do we have? Still, either head or tail. On the third toss, how many choices do we have? Still, head or tail. Then we multiply all of these choices. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So meaning, there are 8 possible outcomes. Did we get the same answer? The one we had with the tree diagram? Yes, there are 8 possible outcomes. Imagine the effort and the time that you've saved using the fundamental counting principle instead of the tree diagram. Yes, fundamental counting principle is indeed really helpful. Now, let's uh, try if we can solve the problem that we have with combo meals. Sige daw, using the fundamental counting principle. On the main dish, how many choices do we have? One, two, three, four, five. We have five choices. For the side dishes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We also have 5. And for the drinks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We also have 5. So let's multiply that. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. So therefore, we have 125 combo meals that are possible. Let's try this. How many four-digit numbers can be formed using the digits 0, 2, 3, 5, and 8 if repetition of digits is not allowed? Again, repetition of digits is not allowed. So we are going to uh, form four-digit numbers. So one, first digit, second digit, third digit, and the fourth digit. We are only allowed to use 0, 2, 3, 5, Five and eight. Okay, so four digits tayo. So how many choices do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So five choices. But remember, four digit numbers. So we cannot use zero for the first digit. Okay? So for the first digit, we only have one, two, three, four. We only have four choices. So the so second digit. Not repet uh, repetition of digits is not allowed, so therefore magma minus one tayo to the number of uh, choices. But instead of four minus one, that's three. Uh, it should be three. But this time zero is allowed here. Okay, zero is allowed here. So we have four choices. 
3 sana yon Kaya lang, 0 can be used on the second digit. Kaya 4 na ulit. Okay? Now, for the third digit, hindi mo na pwedeng gagamit. Hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yung nandito na. At hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yung nandito na. So, that leaves you 3 choices. And this one is 2. So, how many choices do we have? How many possible outcomes do we have? So, 4 times 4, that's 16. 16 times 3, it's 48. 48 times 2, that's 96. Alright. So, so, there are 96 four-digit numbers. Four digit numbers or simply there are 96 numbers now what about the factorial notation the factorial notation is the notation n factorial okay this is read as n factorial where n is greater than zero n is greater than zero and n factorial is equal to n times n minus one times n minus two dot 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 times two times one Example, let's evaluate 3 factorial. To evaluate 3 factorial, we multiply the natural numbers. Take note, natural numbers in decreasing order starting from 3. So we have 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. And that is equal to 6. 3 times 2 is 6, times 1 is 6. Another example, evaluate 5 factorial times 4 factorial. So we have 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And solving this, we have 5 times 4, that is 20. 20 times 3, that's 60. 60 times 2, that's 120. Times 1, that's 120. 4 factorial, that's 4 times 3, is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Times 1, that's 24. And so we have 5 factorial times 4 factorial is equal to 120 times 24. All right, and um, you can use your calculator uh, to solve that. So 120 times 24 equals 2,880. Okay, and that's the answer. We can actually solve this the faster way using your calculator. Five, five factorial, you just have to look to type 5, to key in 5, and then look for this symbol, this one right here. That's x factorial. So since this is the second function, you have to press a shift first and then this function right here to get factorial. So 5 factorial would be key in 5 and then shift and then x factorial. And that's it.